I am an artist living in beautiful Vermont, USA, and I have a lot of questions. So I engage the minds of the people that I meet, poets, writers, artists. I explore what's inside and share it with you. My name is Ricky McEachran, and I am eager to know. Welcome to Eager to Know, and I am very excited to have a singer, songwriter, music educator, and director of programming at Main Street Arts in Saxons River, Vermont, it's Ashley me. Storo. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Rick. It's a, that is a um, a mouthful of titles. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going there's on. There's a lot, with, going, a lot on. going on with you. Yeah. So you and I did like our pre-interview, and we started to like map up what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. But then we're like, eh, we you and I just always just are at Main Street Arts, and we just talk for like an hour nonstop, yep. and um, it's always something interesting. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the eager to know listeners will think that it's interesting. Um, so the reason why I wanted to have you on for this interview is I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about community-based arts. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, I started doing something completely different than being an artist and being a creative person, mm -hmm. and I recently got into that like 10 years ago. And part of that journey has been this podcast mm -hmm. where I get to talk to all sorts of creative people that do all sorts of creative things, and they share them in different ways in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened, I moved here about a year and a half ago, and right around the corner from my house, was a community art center mm -hmm. called Main Street Arts. Mm -hmm. So I got very involved in it. And what was mm -hmm. interesting is I had no experience in community-based arts mm -hmm. and how it can contribute to a community. I just never knew this. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have experienced it, and that's, that's what I wanted to talk about today. So can you just tell me a little bit about, tell everyone a little bit about your creative background mm -hmm. and how you got into community-based arts? Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, I feel like I'll tell you a little bit about my story of how I arrived here because that, that kind of explains how I, what I see the role community-based arts plays in a town. Um, so I've been writing songs my whole life since I was born. Oh, since I was born, that's impossible. Since I was like, probably like five. There's videos of me like on a hay wagon. I grew up on a little farm and I would like sing to the sheep. So it's just like inherent that's, that's in me. For some reason, I have, uh, I am compelled to create and it's not a choice. Sometimes it feels like a curse. Okay. So that's the, the underlying current since I was a kid. And the creative outlet is it's singing. It's, it's always been singing. Always singing. Singing, always singing without music? Were you just singing Sometimes. on the hay bale? Oh without? yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, if we really get comfortable, I'll sing the song for you okay. on the hay bale, but not yet. <laughs> 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 and yeah, so singing and making music have been kind of the underlying layer for me always. Yeah. Um <clears throat> I come from a non-artistic family, mm -hmm. a wonderful family, and um, but the main focus, I would say, of the community that I grew up in was social justice. Mm. Um, so, and that's my other kind of like strong passion. So I went to school for international development because I thought I was going to end world poverty. Mm -hmm. I was like very pie in the sky. And then on the side, I was also always creating music. Okay. But my my life, um, what I saw from my parents and the people around me as adults were like social justice work was your profession and art was an add-on. Okay. Ooh, yeah. yeah, and I, yeah, okay. yeah. And um, so I've been on this journey for my whole adult life to figure out what role music and art can play in, in, in making communities a better place. Because, and, and it sounds like, yeah. and to you. And to, and and to, to me. So I'm on this, I've been on this path of like, so, so I studied international development and then I went into refugee resettlement and I was the director for the state of Maine's refugee resettlement program, the assistant director. So that was like, file like fire trial by fire I think that's the phrase of like um, 
you know, running a nonprofit, a very large nonprofit and doing a form of social justice work, right? Like working with refugees, picking them up at the airport, getting them housed, getting them clothed, and making them um, self-sufficient. It was a very large job. And on the side, on the weekends, I was writing music and playing gigs. And then I was just feeling like music wasn't having enough role in my life, so I created a refugee choir. And that's when I started being curious on how I can really incorporate music more into working with different populations. Um, so when you yeah. did the, the, the refugee choir, was yeah. that something where you were like, let me just try this. I yes, want, I want it. absolutely. And how did it go? Um, pretty well. However, um, this is an interesting point in all of this is um, – People's fundamental thing is basic needs, right? So a lot of people sometimes couldn't show up to rehearsal because they needed to trans. They had to work. Oh, right. They had to pick up their kids. There was transportation issues. So they loved it. I had some wonderful people, but there was a lot around settling into a community and finding work and you know meeting yeah. their basic needs that made it hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but people were passionate about it. Oh yeah. And they connected with. Yeah, it was trying. really cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyways, what, it's a lot, yeah, so I did that for a while, and then I quit entirely, and I focused on being a singer-songwriter. I toured around the country um, with my husband, Putnam Smith. We made a couple albums, and then I missed the social service side of things. I was just a musician. Okay. So I've kind of been on this back and forth between um, music and social services, and then I went and I got my master's at the School for International Training, specifically because you can design your own major. Okay. And I wanted to ask the question, how can I use music and art to improve the well-being of communities? Okay. And in that process, someone said to me, um, there's a choir teacher opening up at Vermont Academy. So I did my practicum for my master's studying how to incorporate social justice teaching pedagogies into a music classroom. Oh my goodness. And as I would drive up to Vermont Academy, I would pass Main Street Arts mm -hmm. every day. And that got me thinking, of, oh, maybe a community-based arts center could be a home for where you can use creative expression to help improve the quality of life of communities. Right. And I actually put Main Street Arts in my senior thesis, a picture of it. Oh, really? And that was like, I don't know, five years ago. So it, for me, it's very, um, it's been this really interesting path that has finally landed me at Main Street Arts. And for me, that feels like this coming together of a space where the arts and and this deep desire I have to make communities more vibrant and people like more mm, what am I trying to do I'm trying to like work with making humans more in touch with who they are or something right yes so if you so if that's your intent and yeah. what your goal is yeah can I assume that um, you know, the, the goal is to make communities better and improve them and in right. touch with who they are. So yeah. I can assume that music, before you were out in the world and you were on the back of that hay bale, yeah. it, what was music and creative expression, what was it doing for you? Mm, that's a great question. Because I'm assuming yeah. that you mm -hmm. it did something for you, and yeah. so you're thinking, wow, this can do something for others yeah. and it can do something for communities. I think it, it gave me a voice from my internal world to my external one. Mm. It was a way to process. It is a way for me to emotionally process what I'm experiencing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's my biggest form of therapy, of healing, really. Yeah. Of like, whatever's going on in, in life externally that it's, that I'm thinking about, I'm emotionally processing, writing a song, singing, music helps it release. Okay. 
Does it help you figure things out? Helps me figure things out. So I assume yeah, a lot absolutely. of the stuff that you create is happy, sad, it's oh, all yeah. over the place. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now when you were yeah. doing that work, I think it was in was it in Maine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um did I am I would assume then that that was a very um, a unique new experience that how did that affect what you were creating for music? Hmm. Yeah, I mean themes come out. So that was an interesting one because I was like straight out of college. I had this like degree in international development and I felt like I had to use it. And so a lot of what I was writing about was around expectations. So it was a lot of me processing like I have this expectation. I, I never... I'm not that explicit. A lot of it's in metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, who wants to hear a song about like refugee resettlement <laughs> expectations? <laughs> like I don't do that. Um, but <laughs> it's all the deeper right. underlying um, message. And I guess for me, what I try to do is if I can tap into the core of an emotional experience of like I'm struggling with my expectations of myself the goal for me is that as a listener it's some universal emotion that you could connect with also yeah. so it's not around my individual experience how, but how but, do because i feel like there's two yeah. parts of this there yeah. is having this experience you know these experiences that we have that have to do with thoughts feelings and then turning that into a musical expression but yeah. then do you have to worry about um, how people receive it Absolutely. and, like, how, and yeah. is that I guess that's part of the skill as a musician is knowing how to not you know rep sing refugee resettlement <laughs> but sing something that people are going to mm -hmm. um, buy into or in the words that you used once with me that yeah. you could convince them of Ah, I said that once. Yes, oh, you, yes, you did. Because we were having this conversation. Yeah. Because uh, of course I'm learning piano, and yeah. uh, we were working on a jingle. Oh, right. Which is another whole story. But yes. I was working on a jingle. Yeah. And I'm like, can we use this chord? If Bly had like some sort of like music theory, is it okay? And you're yeah. like, you can use it if you can convince the listener mm. of it. And right, I was right, like, right, that's right. brilliant. Right. But anyhow. Yeah. No, it is. Re it's related for sure. Um, full package to make my emotion you to experience a similar emotion to me and yeah that's a that's a, the lifelong craft that's so hard but it's kind of exciting because you have this available to you the rest of your life yeah I'm gonna keep working on yeah, it yeah just keep working yeah. on it yeah keep working yeah. on it yeah so the, there's yeah. a difference between you know all of the benefits that we get from what we just described right. through music specifically. Yeah. But if we think about a community art organization, right. that's not just music, it's all sorts of things. Right. So can you yeah. talk can you talk a little bit more broadly about yeah. how yeah. about that affecting our community? You know, yeah. our community is Saxons River, Bellows Falls, mm -hmm. um, in you know, southeastern Vermont. Yeah, so I think part of my journey has been in discovering what are the true s benefits of the arts for the community. Mm -hmm. Like, what are those things, songwriters, painters, piano players, all of us are, like, what are we really getting at? Yeah. And um, some of the things I think about are the arts help us to um, imagine they help us to experience awe. They help us to experience, um, to, to process, to think critically about the way things are, to rethink things. Um, they help us to be vulnerable. 
They help us get in touch with, they help us process emotions. And to me, some of those I call the soft skills. So we have hard skills in life, like I can make a program tracker, or I can send, I can write a grant. And those are huge pieces of making a community a better place. My hard skills, right? Like I can organize a thing, a, a fundraiser for a fuel assistance. Those are very tangible ways to improve a community. Mm -hmm. The arts get at this core underneath all of that of how we exist in this world. Mm -hmm. And it provides us an opportunity to process, to imagine, to rethink how we exist in this world. Mm -hmm. So when we create a center, a place, a home for creative people to get together and bring those types of people and opportunities together, we are doing, for me, the deepest kind of healing that a community can go through. Um, yes, we need to meet our basic needs. We need to make sure our neighbors all have heat. But the way the world is headed, we also need to make sure that we're processing all the crap that's going on right now. Yeah. And the arts are going to help us do that. And if we're not processing it, and we disconnect emotionally, we're screwed. Yeah. So we need art centers. We need the, we need the arts. And we need each other. So arts organizations are this opportunity to like, um, to really get at the core of what's going on um, in our world and process them and make something out of it. Let's talk specifically about where you and I met, which is Main Street Arts in Saxton's River, Vermont, um, which is where I live. So mm -hmm. when I was moving here, when I was looking to move to the area, um, I stumbled on a property in this place called Saxons River that I had never heard of and I came to this little village and there was like two things. Well, there was a post office, there was a general store, and there was a Main Street Art Center. There was also an inn, but the inn was closed at the time. Yeah. So and it's the Main Street Art Center was this beautiful building and I, I got involved. And it's been really wonderful. Um, so the Art Center is really uh, beautiful. It's an old building. It has a beautiful lobby. It has a, an incredible art room. There's bright uh, space that is well lit where we can do art activities. It has a well lit art gallery. Mm -hmm. And then upstairs there is a theater with a stage and there's yeah. a Steinway piano and it's been yeah. really uh, incredible. I have personally never been associated with anything like something like this, yeah. but the quality of this place is just fantastic. Yeah. And then there's the programming. So I don't know if you yeah. want to talk a little bit about the programming that Main Street Arts does. Sure. Yeah. I mean, right now we have 14 programs and they're mostly in these buckets okay. <laughs> the, the buckets being um, music theater wellness and community events um, and that's all happened pretty organically which I think is a piece of what this is right is like people who's in the community and what do they need and they come to us and they see a space and they're like I want to offer yoga I want to offer um, a children's music class. So we're just like a home. Or a sewing circle. Or a sewing circle. There's a sewing circle, circle called Stitcheroos. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a gathering space. I yeah. mean, to me, it's essentially a community space. Yeah. And then how we gather and what we do is some form of art. Yeah, wonderful. Which is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. And, it yeah. was, and it's been great getting to know you. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm on the board there. Um, you work there and yeah. we're there together a lot and we end yeah. up as I mentioned earlier when we started this conversation you and I owned up just talking yeah. and we usually have like some specific task that we are dealing with like a spreadsheet yeah. Yeah. And we end up just like talking for like 45 minutes yeah. about all sorts of interesting things yeah I think that's a piece of it right what draws me to it back to that is being around other creative people yeah and I think we all creative people crave creative people I would agree I would we agree. need each other it, feel, it feels really good being around 
um, other creative people. Yeah. Um, I mean, my background, my previous career, I was around creative people. Yeah. But I was like a project manager. Right. So you were that, managing creative ugh, people. Yeah, I was managing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I was like spread spreadsheets and schedules. Yeah. So I did. I couldn't interface with creative people in a creative way. People didn't yeah. see me that way. Yeah. So that's been one of the great things about mm -hmm. being at Main Street Arts is people see do see me as an artist mm -hmm. and that changes the way they engage with me mm -hmm. and um, and the way that I engage with them. Absolutely. So it's been incredible. And I think that's yeah. why we do have these really long conversations because I'm yeah. so excited to yeah. be able to actually talk to creative people. And that's why I'm doing this podcast, quite right. frankly, right. is so that I can have these conversations. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like oh, there's some author who talks about, like, I don't know. It's almost the wrong, the wrong word is coming to me, but like creative people holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. of like we, we can get lost sometimes, Yeah. especially creative people. Your brain is just like yeah. going all over the place. But when there's a gathering, when there's that energy, you're like, you are committed to being a painter. That's cool for me as a musician I don't even need to be in the same medium mm. but to know someone else is out there doing something that to think of you like tinkering in your studio and like dropping into that space and like disconnecting from all the craziness of the world knowing that you're doing that down mm. the street makes it that much more like I can do that too oh wonderful and I think that's like what I hope Main Street Arts can be is like this home of of creative people coming together and and not only of creative people coming together but bringing other people into the fold that might not consider themselves that way yeah and I think and I think that it is from from what I see yeah right. yeah well Ashley yeah. thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me yeah, I think this conversation right. went great without a lot of planning I mm -hmm. think it just See, As we don't need to plan. We don't need to plan. We don't need so. to plan. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. My name is Ricky McGeckrin, and you have been listening to Eager to Know, the podcast. If you haven't already, please go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join me next week for another Eager to Know podcast.